That's what Jen and I was going to say. There we go. Okay, we should be live. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. We should be live, or we are live. <laughs> hey, we're going to. We've got, this is our second service. We had an earlier service <laughs> five minutes ago. Uh, Jeremiah led us in a song. I sang really loud, so for those of you who missed that, too bad. Um, Jeremiah's going to kick us off again, and uh, we're just glad that you guys are here with us. Sing the song, No Longer Slaves. You unravel me with a melody. You serve. Let us 
us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become something special for us today in this interesting time and, uh, and so we invite you to get a hold of our of our thoughts this morning get a hold of our mindset this morning change the way that we think we invite you to have your way in this place with us amen amen give the Lord a hand this morning amen 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 you go to turn to your family member, whoever's next to you, and give them a, a, a oh, wait, uh, elbow. elbow. <laughs> so, uh, all right, this is Levita. Levita's going to get you caught up on what's happening here at Timber Creek. And we are glad you guys have joined us. Um, how fun. Uh, welcome to my living room. It's kind of a little bit nostalgic for Patrick and I because whether you're new to Timber Creek or you've been with us forever, guys, this is where it all started. It's right here in this living room several years ago, Timber Creek. Began. So here we are again, and we have some of our pastors here joining us. They're yelling, hello. <laughs> so we are here. Um, I wanted to say, let us know you're here. Comment below. We'd love to know that we're fellowshipping with you. If this is your first time, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Uh, send us a message on Facebook. We'd love to connect with you. And actually, you can text us at 97,000, and you can text TC New. We can actually connect with you that way, too. Another good thing, just during this season where we've had a lot of communication, we've had um, a lot of information to communicate with you guys, I'm going to encourage you right now, Timber Creek Church, get your phones out because you're at your home. They should be charged. Um, text TC Loop to 97,000. What that does is it puts you in the loop with us so we can get the information out. We can let you know what's going on. Um, but really, we are just so thankful you guys are here. And I wanted to take a minute. Um, our president has just issued this as a national day of prayer. So that's one of the big things we want to do today is we want to join with you. We want to join with churches online and in buildings all around the world. And we want to pray together. And I want to give you three real quick things for your family because you guys are home with kiddos too. Um, you should be getting an email or have gotten an email from our children's director, Tracy who is sending you out stuff to do with your kids this morning. Um, but one of the things I want you to pray with your kids and in this group is we're going to pray for inside our walls. We're going to pray for outside of our walls. And we're going to pray that Jesus helps us rebuild the walls. And here's what that looks like. We're going to pray for everything in our walls. That's our family. That's our friends. Um, that's the people in your home. That's the people you know and love. We're going to pray for outside the walls. And those are your neighbors. Um, that is our country. That is our city. And then we're going to pray that we get to be a part of rebuilding the walls. And guys, this is the church. This is the church. This is where you go to your neighbors and you um, help them rebuild the wall of safety. Maybe you are rebuilding walls for people that feel like walls are crumbling right now. We rebuild, rebuild for a nation. So we're going to pray that right now. But those are three quick areas. I'll let you guys define that at home, but it gives you some prayer points. But let's go ahead and pray right now together. Lord, ah, we're so thankful. God, we're thankful we can meet in homes. Lord, that's, that's where it started in the Bible anyways. So God, we're so thankful 
that we get to begin again the way you started church in the very beginning, right in a home, together, as the church. Because we know church is not walls. Church is this right here. Church is people. Church is community. And God, you are right here in the middle. Lord, we pray right now for those that are inside our walls. We pray for our friends and family. We pray for peace. We pray for protection. We pray for health. God, we, we just pray that you would step in in big ways. Let our kids see you in new ways in this season. Let us communicate you in new ways to our families and to our friends. God, I pray for the people that are outside of our walls. Lord, I pray for our neighbors. Maybe our neighbors right now that need us to say, hey, I'm praying for you. It's going to be okay. God, maybe um, our city that needs us to jump in and be a part of some things. God, we want to do that. We want to help where there's need. Lord, for our nation, for our leaders, that you'd give them wisdom. Lord, you'd help them to know the next steps. God, just be right there. Give them wisdom, Father. And help us as a church to stand up behind them, Lord. And God, we pray that you would let this church and churches around the nation be a part of rebuilding the walls. God, that we would put them up one by one. God, that walls around our cities that represent um, protection. God, that we would just understand that you are right there helping us build that. We love you so much, Father. Let us be a part of that. God, we pray for this time together. God, just let it be fun. Mm. Let it be family. God, let us feel each other here together. We love you so much. And we thank you for that. Thank you for the people that are listening right now. God, thank you for our family. In your name, amen. Amen. We're going to do a little switcheroo now. Glad you guys are here. <laughs> Musical chairs. Hey, I wanted to say, uh, just give a shout out to my wife, Lenita. It is her birthday today. And so um, my wife loves family time. And so we uh, woke her up this morning and said, hey, two weeks straight of nothing but family time. Happy birthday. And so um, she is pretty thrilled about that. Uh, hey, I want to uh, just take a few minutes and be able to share with you guys. And I'm, I'm grateful you're here this morning. I know that there's pastors all across the country today that are preaching to cameras in empty rooms. And um, ours is different because we've got a number of the pastors and their families here so it's almost like a small group for us, and so I'm just going to invite you to join in uh, with that. But we are praying for you guys this week, praying for all the challenges that are in front of you as a family, all the decisions that you're going to need to make um, just regarding safety and, and uh, just the decisions that you've got coming up. And so we're praying for you. We love you. We believe in you, and we know that God's got this. And so... Um, we're going to do our very best to make the most out of the next couple of weeks here. Uh, for my part, I'm going to be drinking coffee while I share and just kind of hanging out a little bit. There's going to be times in the next few uh, days or next few weeks that we're going to have other pastors that are sharing as well. Um, but before I jump into just a really short teaching this morning, I just want to let you know that we have, uh, we're just continuing to plan for Easter. And we are trusting and believing that we're going to be able to gather together uh, to be able to celebrate at that time. It's about a month away. And I do know this, no matter how long this, uh, this little break is, this, this hiatus, uh, you could call it a quarantine maybe, yes. um, uh, however long this is, I know that we're going to be thrilled when we finally get to be together again in person. And so uh, I'm grateful though that we have this opportunity to do this online today. So we're preparing for Easter. We're getting things ready to roll. We had a new series that we were going to kick off today actually and decided to just kind of hit the pause button on it for a little bit, because what I want to do this morning is I just want to share a super relevant story of Jesus right out of his life today. Uh, you'd find it in, in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and today what I want to do is I want to share it from Mark's perspective. Um, you're going to find it in Mark chapter 4, um, and here's the gist of the story. Uh, there was one day that Jesus told his disciples he wanted to go to the other side of the Lake of Galilee, and so they hopped in a boat, and they started out. And the Bible says that as they sailed across this, uh, this sea, this lake here, that Jesus laid down for a nap. And Mark said that as soon as he did, there was a huge storm that rose up, and the boat began filling with water. And it said, Mark said this, they were in real danger. 
He said that the, the disciples were truly in danger. The disciples went to Jesus. They woke him up shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. I don't know if you've ever been woken up by your kids, like yelling at you, like, Mom, Mom, get up, or Dad, Dad, help me. But, but you can imagine how these disciples were, were frantic at the time, and they were yelling, Jesus, Master, Master, wake up, we're going to drown. And Mark said when Jesus woke up that he stood and he spoke to the wind and to the waves, and he simply said, peace, be still. And it said suddenly the storm stopped and all was calm. And this is, this is what's so great. Jesus turned to his disciples and he asked these two questions. He said, first of all, why are you so fearful? And secondly, where is your faith? And what I want to do today is I, just, I know there's a lot of powerful things that you can pull out of this story. Uh, but I just really want to point out three this morning. And the first is this, that in the middle of the chaos, Jesus was at peace. In fact, he was in so much peace that he was sleeping during the storm. And, and you just got to ask, like, how is that? How is it that Jesus could have that kind of peace when the wind and the waves are, are hitting up against the boat and the disciples are, are frantic and they're nervous and, and they're in danger? But it, it's simply because Jesus trusted his Father over his circumstances. And I, I know that you guys are all aware of this, that we have some really difficult circumstances that we're facing right now. But here's what Isaiah said. He said, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you and whose thoughts are set on you. Let me read that again. I know we don't have screens and a way for you to follow along this morning. Isaiah 26, 3. God will keep in perfect peace all who trust in him and whose thoughts are set on him. And so here's what I want to encourage you in. In this moment, in this circumstance, and maybe just right now in, in this minute, to just take a deep breath. If everybody will do that. Just take a moment. A deep breath. That you set your mind on him and that you trust him over your storm. And here's our reality. We may have to do that multiple times a day for this next season. And I'll tell you this, it's not a bad habit to get into. If something good comes out of this next few weeks, it could be that we turn to Jesus daily, minute by minute. We take a deep breath, we set our mind on him, and we trust him over whatever circumstance we're facing. Scripture tells us over and over and over again that God sits enthroned over the earth, over the flood, over the storm, over the pestilence, he sits enthroned over it, and it reminds us to cast our worries and our anxieties on him because he cares for us. And so I want to encourage you again in this moment that you'd set your mind on him, take a deep breath, trust him over your storm. Here's the second thing I want to point out, and I already referenced this. The disciples were in real danger. It wasn't a made-up thing. They were frantic. I mean, I could picture them bailing water, holding on to the ropes, grabbing the sails, and just holding on for dear life. I mean, it, this picture presents quite a, a contrast between Jesus and the disciples and how they reacted. And we know that there is a massive pendulum swing uh, of responses and reactions in the kind of situation that we find ourselves in right now with the coronavirus. There's people who feel this pendulum has swung all the way over here, and they feel that there's really no threat, and they feel that it's not serious at all. Then there's some on the other side of the pendulum who feel like the world is ending and, and the sky is falling. There's those who believe that if they don't hand sanitize a hundred times a day, that they, they are a massive threat and danger. And then there's those who are just simply upset that toilet paper is gone all across America, and they're more concerned about that Amen. than they are maybe <laughs> anything else. So here, here's an action step. No matter what side of the pendulum you find yourself on with this coronavirus case, there are people who, like the disciples, are in real danger here. It may not be you. It may not be your kids. It may not be your family. But there are people, like the disciples, it's not a made-up thing. They're in real danger. Here's the question. How do we care for the vulnerable and speak peace in the middle of the storm, just like Jesus did. How can you be someone who brings that same love and compassion? One of the consistent things we see about Jesus' responses 
during his time on earth is that they were always filled with compassion. And so let's let that be how our, our response happens here. Let that be um, what we do to a world that's, that, like the disciples, is crying out for help right now. All right, here's the third thing. It's the final thing. I think this is where we settle today. Jesus called for faith, not fear, in the middle of the storm. He asked the disciples, why are you fearful? Where's your faith? And here's what I want to say. I don't believe this was just a comment about their lack of faith. I believe it was a call for the activation of their faith in the middle of the storm. Because we know that storms can have a way of growing your faith like nothing else can. Storms can have a way of growing your faith like nothing else can. And this may very well be one of the most intense incubations of your faith that you're going to face in your lifetime. And here's our question. Will you trust God with it? Will you lean into Him? And so here's what I want to do. I want to strongly call upon you in the same way that Jesus called upon His disciples. In this season of easy chaos, don't spread fear. Spread faith. Don't turn to panic. Turn to peace. Make your decisions based on wisdom, not worry. Ironically, one of the most famous pictures and depictions of this story of Jesus speaking peace to the storm was painted by Rembrandt. It was a painting by him. It was stolen 30 years ago from a museum, never been recovered since then. And here's what I can tell you. People in these kinds of situations will try to steal your peace. There are people who are going to bait you with fear. They're going to bait you with um, with panic. They're going to bait you with worry. Don't let somebody steal your peace in this season. Jesus said this in John 14, 27. He said, my peace I give to you. It's a peace that the world can't provide. It can't provide it for you. The world can't give it to you. And as the old hymn would say, the world can't take it away either. And so here's, I want to wrap up and I want to leave you with this this morning. When our world is shaken, it's easy for fear to spread. We know that. But God promises to be with us no matter what storms would come our way. And in times of uncertainty, it's more important than ever for us to trust in God and to choose faith over our fear. So here's my last challenge. It's a huge challenge to you all this week. Be cautious without being fearful. Be cautious without being fearful. Do your part. Place your trust in Him. Because he cares for you. Now this is going to be really short today. We're going to wrap it up. And over the next few weeks we're going to do this as well. Because what we want to do is we want to pray. And then we want to turn it over to you all. To be able to discuss with your families. To be able to discuss with your small groups. Or wherever you may be. Um, questions like this. How do you stay grounded in peace? Uh, what can you do to help those who are in need? And how do you spread faith? Not fear. In this season. So if there's anything that we can do to help you during this time as a church, please reach out to us. Let us know. You can find all of our contact info on our website, timbercreek.co, not timbercreek.com, timbercreek.co. And I just want to take a moment here and pray. So if you guys would just bow your heads, we're going to wrap up. God, um, we want to ask you just to help us activate our faith in this season, Lord. We ask that you would firmly plant us in your peace, that we'd be rooted there, and we know that it's a peace that the world can't take away from us. They can't steal it. So, Lord, we're asking you for peace. We're asking you for wisdom, that you would help us to trust you, to show compassion to those who are in need, and for us to be able to shine our light as bright as possible as your church in the days in front of us. Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, listen. Uh, I love you all. And I just want to speak this benediction over you as we wrap up this morning. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you this week. May he cause his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May he turn his face towards you and to give you peace. Listen, we love you guys. Have a great Sunday. We'll be in touch, in, in virtual touch, that is. And uh, just hoping you guys will have a great time. <laughs> have a great time discussing with your families. We love you all.